Okay, it's four o'clock in the morning here and I'm doing some testing on uh, the next version of SkyTrack. And uh, the new feature I wanna show here is under the utility tabs. And what we're doing here is we're gonna build a, uh, a pointing model and uh, a pointing model for the, just for the p path of the satellite that we're going to be taking a look at in a few minutes. So the first thing I want to do is set up a camera. So we're with the camera. We're going to do some plate solving. <clears throat> so I've, I've chosen my ASCOM driver for my camera. I said we're going to do five second exposures. So let's just uh, connect the camera here. <clears throat> and uh, let's do a test exposure. So I'm just sort of pointed at a random place right now. So it saved an image. And then I'm using Aztap Place Plate Solver. And that software can be downloaded from uh, hnsky.org. And so I've downloaded and installed the, um, the program and also downloaded and installed the large star database, uh, H18. H17 will probably work as well too, but I got lots of hard drive space, so I'm using the large database. Um, it's important to set up the focal length of your telescope. And um, so I've done that, and then I'm using the rest of the, the defaults for the rest of the parameters. Uh, settle time is, uh, is important. So that is after you uh, slew to a location, how long do you want your mount and telescope to settle before you start imaging? Because you don't want any vibration on your image in order to get a good, clean, and accurate plate solve. So we've already taken that test image, and I'm just going to do it. a solve on it, make sure we can solve it. And it solved well, so that's good. So we're ready to start building our model. So I'm going to go back to satellite tracking. And we're going to take a look at uh, the Starlink, which is coming up in about 13 minutes. So we better get going. And under the um, Future Pass Prediction tab here, I'm looking at uh, sorry, this this path. So in about 13 minutes, that's coming through. Um, so we're going to click on this new button here, Model Pass, and what's it going to do? It's going to create a, lo a long list of points all along the anticipated path that we're going to plate solve and get corrections for our pointing. Um, I'm going to click Solve what we've already connected the camera, so I'm going to uh, click solve all passes, all points on the pass. It determined the number of points by these parameters here, so I told it I want a, a point every 240 arc minutes along that pass, and I want to start at 30 degrees elevation and, and stop at 30 degrees. So you can see the first point is around 30 degrees altitude. Uh, it's slewing, and now it's settling, so that, that three second settle time, now it's taking an image. So it thinks the mount is pointing here, and it's going to plate solve that, and it's going to tell us, well, it's really based on the star pattern, it's really pointing here. And so here's the correction we would need to apply. And we can see right now my, my pointing is off by five arc minutes, 5.03. If I want to see how well it's going to point with the corrections, I can click this, Verify Precision. And so what it's going to do after it plate solves and figures out what correction needs to be applied, it's going to do uh, another slew, applying those corrections. And uh, so there it's settling again. It's going to take another image and another plate solve, and then it's gonna show us how well we're pointing with our corrections. So 
we originally had 5.57 arc minute air and with the correction we're now down to 0 0.04 so that's arc minutes so if we multiply by 60 we get arc seconds so that'd be 2.4 arc seconds pointing accuracy so that is pretty good so I'm gonna unclick this because I don't want it to do it for every point it'll take twice as long to do because it's it has to do two images two plate solves and I'm just gonna trust it that it's doing doing well um, you can see where I didn't verify I had a status that just completed and if it would fail it would fit say fail there and these two it, it says it verified because we had that clicked and it uh, did a verification of the, the corrections. When it's finished, we got 28 points. When it's finished, it's going to um, automatically save this, this file. And uh, I could come back at a later time and then load this model and enable it. Um, however, a model is only good for um, your alignment. So this doesn't replace the alignment of the mount that you would do at the beginning of the evening. But once you do your alignment and you build a model, if you go back and adjust your alignment, the model is going to become um, invalid and you would have to redo your, your model again. Um, so I think we'll, we'll pause the video for a moment and then we'll come back to this as it's finishing up. Okay, so we're just finishing up here. We just have a, a few more points to do. So we've done 24 of 28. I just want to point something out here. So I'm using a, a German equator mount. So you can see on the, on the one side of the meridian, I have quite a bit of pointing air. I, I pur purposely didn't do a, a real good alignment um, for this demonstration, just to prove that the model is working. Um, so you can see my pointing here is four to five arc minutes. Uh, but down here, um, so right here we, we did a meridian flip and this is the other side of the meridian now. And you can see my, my air is a lot less. So I do have some, some cone air and my, um, my alignment didn't account for that cone air. Um, so probably don't need a, a pointing model at all um, on this side of the meridian because it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be pretty good. But on this side there's uh, some significant pointing error. So we'll we'll prove that once we get going here. So so we're done. And um, let's say this point was bad. Uh, it failed or my uh, uncorrected error didn't look reasonable then I can just highlight that and click this button which is only going to do a solve on the selected point so it's slewing back to this point and it's going to solve it again I didn't need to I just wanted to show that feature I, I had um, earlier tonight I did have a, a point where it, it said 600 here so it actually plate solved incorrectly and thought I was 10 degrees somewhere else. So I, I redid that point and then it, it looked more like a reasonable value. Um, so we're finished here and I'm gonna click this here and that enables the model and that shows here that we're using the model. And um, we're about a minute away from AOS. So uh, it took me uh, just a little more than 10 minutes to uh, to do all this plate solving so it's fairly quick and um, I can start my tracking uh, a couple versions ago it had this new feature where you can uh, start your satellite tracking before AOS before the arrival of signal and it's just going to go to the position where it wants to pick up the satellite. So I've got my um, my minimum elevation at 20 degrees, which is 
just seeing over the wall of my observatory. So it's coming in about 45 seconds. So I'm going to pop out this. And I don't need that map. We're going to use Sharp Cap to capture some video. So my, my pointing should be good. Uh, where I'll still need to make adjustments, my, my computer time might not be 100% accurate. Um, I'm just going to zero that out. So we're going to have to use these left and right arrows to make some adjustments for the timing. There goes another satellite. And in five seconds, we should see the satellite come up in here. And here it is. That's one we're going to track. And so we're going to start tracking that guy. And so you can see our, our timing is off a little bit. So I'm going to... Going, going the wrong way, I think. Okay, so my timing was uh, about four tenths of a second off. So now we're now we're tracking nicely right in the center. So I'm gonna go into a smaller area of the chip. And there we are, and we're almost like dead dead center at uh, only 1024 by 768. So let's let's prove that the model is working here. If we go in here, get this out of the way, and I'm going to click the model off and show you what happens. There, the model's off and. Uh, it actually lost lost view of the satellite. It's right off. So that's with my pointing that isn't so accurate on that side of the meridian. So if I click the model back on, we should see that come right back up. And there it is, nice nicely centered in our on our chip. And in uh, another minute, we're going to do a meridian flip. And we should, uh, after meridian flip, we should, whoops, still playing with this timing a bit here. After the meridian flip, we should see it um, center right up again, even though we're just using a small small portion of the chip. See how sensitive it is. Like uh, each, of, each of those clicks is only like 0 0.02 seconds and you can, you can see that move quite a bit. So timing is critical. And we're, we're 25, 20 seconds away from Meridian. Also in this update, you can see uh, there's an RMS value, and that's based on the last um, five tracking adjustments, how well it's doing at uh, keeping things centered. There we go, there's a meridian flip. So with this pointing model, we, we should be able to see that centered again on the other side of the meridian. getting there. We can see the separation coming down and when that gets close to zero we should should see our satellite again. And there she is. And look at that, almost perfectly centered again. So like I said, my pointing, according to the model here, the pointing was better on this side of the meridian without the model. So let's just disable it. I think it's still going to, yeah, so there's almost no difference between the model and not using the model on the side of the meridian. 
which is what we saw here, that our pointing was pretty good. It was on this side of that we needed corrections. So um, it's a feature that you're probably not going to use on, on every satellite on an evening session, but uh, it's more for those high value targets like um, International Space Station, and especially if you're if you want to uh, zoom in on it and use just a small portion of your chip, or or your camera already has a, a fairly small chip, or if you're working at a um, a long focal length, high magnification, and you need better pointing, this is what you would use. And um, again, it doesn't doesn't really take that long. Once everything's set up, it's it's easy to do. You can, um, like, you can build your model hours ahead if you want. You just can't alter your alignment of your mount in between, or the model becomes invalid. So, so you can actually do uh, a few different uh, passes ahead of time, and then uh, you would just click this. You know, I've got all kinds of models in here, and um, you would just select the one you want for the particular pass enable it and away you go. So at this point this this pointing model is only for satellites. Uh, it's not for your astronomical objects in that. Um, I, I do plan in the future of, of having another modeling option and that would be like an all sky model. So you would just do that once in the evening and would probably work well for most of your satellite passes. Probably won't be quite as accurate as what this one is uh, for satellites, but uh, it'd be a little little easier because you do it once for all your objects, including your astronomical objects. So um, I still have more testing to do, and hopefully in a couple weeks I can uh, release this. And um, hope you find it valuable to um, improve your pointing and make sure you get that satellite on your chip. Thanks for now.